Good evening, friends. It's Mel. Welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I'm going to bring you three meals we had this week that I think you're going to love and you may want to try them out with your own family this week. Sit back, relax, grab a glass of sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. I saw my friend Life with Valerie Rose make a taco ring a week or so ago, and I have not been able to stop thinking about it. So that is the first dish I am making tonight. It only takes a half a pound of ground beef, and I happen to have half a pound in the freezer. So I just pulled that out and put it in a skillet. I put a little bit of olive oil with it and just slowly heated that back up to defrost it and get a little bit of juice back in it. Once I got that heated thoroughly, I just put it in a separate little bowl and you're going to take a whole envelope of taco seasoning into that half a pound of hamburger meat. I think if you have the canister, that's probably three or four tablespoons, but I just used a little envelope. To that, you are going to add a couple of tablespoons of water, and you're just going to mix that all together. You may think that is too much taco seasoning for just a half a pound of meat, but don't overthink it. Just go with it because using all this crescent dough, you're really going to need all that flavor. And into that meat mixture then, you're just going to add one cup of shredded cheddar cheese and just get it all kind of mixed together as best as you can. Now there's a lot of different ways people form these taco rings. I've just made it enough times. I can even make it on a rectangle pan and make it turn into a ring. But the best way that I knew to show you was to just show you how I do it. And roll the crescent rolls and you start putting them in a little circle overlapping each other with the pointed side out. You go through two cans of crescent rolls this way. I have seen people put like a little a glass bowl or something upside down in the middle of it that kind of keeps you on your circle but like I said I've made enough of these I can kind of just feel how it it needs to go and it don't have to be perfect y'all know I like my food to look rustic just don't overthink it then once you have your little circle of crescents fixed up you're just going to take big spoonfuls of your taco meat and put it all around about the midway of those crescent rolls and you're going to go all the way around your little circle and then go back and fill in anywhere that you feel like looks sparse. Then you're just going to grab your outer points of the crescent roll, pull, pull it over the top and kind of tuck it under or into that dough that's in the middle. And you're just going to do that going all the way around your taco ring. This is one of my favorite little dishes. I believe this originally came from one of those Pampered Chef little dollar cookbooks that you used to get all the time at the different parties from them. Um, but I love this. I've seen a lot of different variations with lots of different fillings in this. But this is probably our favorite. And this is going to go in a 375 degree oven. And mine just takes about 15 minutes to cook up. You just watch your oven and go with when it looks nice and brown. Basically, you're just getting your crescent rolls done up. Then I wanted some refried beans. And I just throw whatever I feel like in a can of refried beans. This night I threw in some sour cream. 
I had a little bit of Mexican blend cheese left to get rid of and then I always like to either put taco sauce or taco seasoning in my refried beans and tonight I just used some taco sauce and just heat all of that up thoroughly on top of the stove and that just gives them a little extra flavor and a little bit creamier consistency. If you don't have anything, you can just put a little bit of water in there and that will cream them up just a little bit or some milk. And I did make some Mexican rice for my family too. Just a box of Noor. And there comes my taco ring. It's so pretty and brown and all puffed up. And you can see how the cheese melts in there and how doughy that bread gets. So you're going to be glad you have all that seasoning in your meat through there. So it's just going to be busting with flavor. And I use a pizza cutter. You can use whatever you have or whatever you want to, but that's just the quickest, easiest way that I have found to cut this. I served mine up with a nice little taco salad on the side. I had some big tortilla chips on the bottom of it and I had some beautiful green leaf lettuce, some tomatoes, some of those refried beans and sour cream, a little shredded cheese and taco seasoning with it too. And that was just the best thing that I've had in a long time. It really hit the spot that night. I definitely went back for another helping of taco salad. The next meal I'm making is a crock pot meal. We all love them and it's Salisbury steak. And to put your meat together, I'm using about a pound and a half of ground round. And then I'm going to use about a fourth a cup of onion and then you're going to use one egg yolk. I'm going to put in a third a cup of panko breadcrumbs, about three tablespoons of milk, a little bit of garlic and some salt and pepper. Then you're going to take your hands and you're just going to mix this all up real good and don't overwork it too much and you'll patty out about six patties is what I got out of this. And I actually did this at night just so I could put it in the crock pot the next morning. So there are my six patties all fixed up and I just sear them in my little skillet there and get them brown not trying to get them done just want to get a good color on them and get a little bit of grease out of there and I'm gonna go ahead and make my gravy and I use a cup and a half of beef broth which is like one of the just regular size cans and I use one packet of brown gravy mix two tablespoons of ketchup a teaspoon of some Dijon mustard and then I use some Italian seasoning. This normally just calls for parsley flakes, but anytime something asks for parsley, I just throw in Italian seasoning because that's what I have. And like I said, I made this up the night before so that all I had to do the next morning was put it in the crock pot. So that's why I'm pouring my gravy into this container because I'm just going to put it in the fridge overnight. And also, once my meat got seared up here, I did not forget about all that good greasy stuff in the bottom because I would totally put that in my crock pot. So I just put that down in my broth to give it a little extra flavor. So it's the next morning and I have sprayed my crock pot with some cooking spray. I even chopped up this onion the night before put that down in the bottom then put my little Salisbury steaks in there and then I'm gonna put some more onion over top of that you this is great with mushrooms if you're a mushroom lover my family does not like mushrooms so that's why they're not in here and then just pour your gravy mix and as always I will have you a recipe typed out in the description box or a pen or a link So I cooked this on low all day long. I was gone 
probably eight hours that day. So when I got home, I just took the steaks out. Look how good they were got brown on the top because they weren't completely submerged in that gravy. I just made me a little slurry with some water and some flour just to tighten up my gravy and get it a little bit thicker. Put it up on high just for a little while while I worked on that gravy. Then when it got thickened up, I just cut it back down to like keep warm and I put my steaks back in there. And check out these green beans. I just grabbed two cans of green beans out of my pantry and they were totally different colors. This one said it's extra green green beans. It really messed up the look of my green beans. I did not mean to purchase these. Everything tastes great and we had this yummy uh, Salisbury steak. It was so tender and so flavorful. It was wonderful and I made some homemade mashed potatoes and I will link you a video down below showing you how I make my mashed potatoes. We had our green beans, macaroni and cheese, nothing any better and very little work that day to get this meal together. Now my third recipe that I'm going to make you tonight is a little bit fancy. And this is a pork roast with plum sauce. And the first thing that you're going to need is about a two to three pound pork loin roast. And once I got mine home and got it opened, it was actually two smaller loins, but that's okay. I just cooked them up together. And you're just going to put your seasons on here and rub them in. And I used about half a teaspoon of black pepper and then a whole teaspoon of sage and then I just put some garlic across the top just you know a clove or two probably and once I got all of that on top of the pork I just took my hands and kind of rubbed it into it and then you're gonna put this in the oven I cooked mine about 300 degrees for two hours I did get mine just a little bit overdone um, the pork loin having the two small ones instead of the one bigger one it did cook a little bit quicker just make sure that it reaches an internal temperature of about 145 degrees so while the roast was cooking away in the oven I decided to cut up some potatoes so that we could have some roasted potatoes and while I'm cutting these I want to tell you about my friend Debbie this is her recipe um, I just love Debbie. She was like a mother figure to me when I was a young girl, just starting out at work, a new wife and new mom, and Debbie is the most encouraging person. Debbie and I are like Jonathan and David in the Bible. She is just always got my back, and she always would. We can pick up any time, and it's like we haven't had any time apart. But this was Debbie's recipe. She is an amazing cook, amazing mom, amazing grandmom now, and she loved to entertain. And she could set a table prettier than anybody I have ever seen. You always felt like when you went to Debbie's house for supper that she pulled out all the stops for you. And I just can't say enough good things about Debbie. So I've got my potatoes all cut up and I just put some oil on them, some garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, Italian seasoning, and salt and pepper. And I just put these on the bottom rack of my oven while my pork roast was still in there so they could begin to cook about the last 30 minutes that my roast was in. Once I pulled my roast out, I did crank the temperature up a little bit so they could get a little more crispy. But you just want to get them good and oiled and seasoned and laid out in a single layer across your baking sheet. Now we're going to work on the sauce. I have pulled my roast out and we're going to make this beautiful plum sauce. And for this, you use one cup of red plum jam. And you use three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And 
and you use four tablespoons of soy sauce. It calls for dry mustard. I don't keep dry mustard, so I just always, if I have Dijon, I'll use it, about three teaspoons full. And if I don't, I'll just use regular mustard. It also calls for allspice. I do not keep that, but I just always sub pumpkin pie spice for that. It's basically the same things. And you're just going to put all this together in your little um, pot and bring it to a bowl and then you're just going to reduce and let it simmer for just a few minutes. I had a bag of Brussels sprouts in the freezer. I steamed those in the microwave and then I put them out on a sheet pan. I used this bourbon and balsamic steak sauce and some bacon bits. Just coated all that and mixed it up and threw that in the oven as the potatoes were done and coming out roasted them oh it just didn't take long with them already being steamed probably 10 15 minutes tops to get a good color on those so this is a super fancy looking meal look at that pretty sauce it's good on the potatoes too and this was so easy but it's so impressive y'all didn't know I could pull this off did you I've got more than pinto beans in me, friends, but I do thank Debbie for sharing this recipe with me all these years ago. Guys, it's been so much fun. I just appreciate y'all watching so much. If you like my What's for Dinner videos, be sure to give them a thumbs up. Share them with somebody you think might like them too. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I send you love from my kitchen. Have a great week.